Okay. Uh, uh, welcome, welcome everybody. It looks like we are live here in Crypto Buckles. <laughs> welcome everybody. Uh, we uh, apologies. We uh, hopefully should have Nick joining us very, very shortly. Mm -hmm. But uh, welcome to the party. We are here at uh, the official official launch event for Daichi Yamamoto and Mick Jenkins' new single, Kill Me, Kill Me in the Metaverse. Um, very excited to be doing this um, in the metaverse in Crypto Voxels here today, especially as we got Daichi all the way out in, in Japan and uh, Mick out in, in the US. Um, my name is Ren, um, founder of Frank Renaissance. We are a newly launched record label uh, working with Japanese artists um, and bringing them to a global stage creating connections um, between Japan and the U.S. Um, with this launch, um, we are, uh, uh, with this launch, we are not only dropping the track, but we have an exclusive set of NFTs uh, coming out here. Um, and uh, you'll see those in the room here. We'll talk about those more a little bit later. Um, and if you like what you're hearing, um, you know, give us a shout. Uh, if you press the G button, you can throw up some uh, some emojis uh, to tell us how you feel. And so we'd love to see you all reacting with us today. Um, and so Daichi, we'll, we'll start it up here with you. Um, you know, we'd love to, to learn a little bit more about your background. We'd love for you to tell the audience here today a little bit about uh, who you yep. are, uh, where you're from, and, and how you became uh, the rapper that you are today. Cool, yeah. Uh, hi, hi everyone, um, Daichi Yamamoto. I was born in born and raised in Kyoto and uh, half Japanese Jamaican, and I started rapping when I was like nineteen, and released my first album like two three years ago, which was when I was like twenty four twenty five. Good good to know. Good to know. What what uh oh, what yeah. drove you to become a what drove you to become a, a rapper? Sorry, could you say it again? Oh, okay. Yeah. What what drove you to become a, a rapper? Job. What what drove you? What what, ah, drove. what was ah. that? Yeah. What was the kickake to make you ah, okay. uh, make you become a rapper? Yeah, and and what are you, what are the what are the what are your biggest motivations today um, in terms of the tracks that you write, um, the lyrics that you create? Um, Got it. Got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. One one second. I'm hearing that we're having technical difficulties. Uh, oh, people okay. can't can't seem to hear us right now. So, really, apologies. Bear with us for one second here. Oh, we can now. I think people can hear us now. We are all good. I'm getting getting some uh, getting some uh, play by play from the from the audience here. But uh, oh, but yeah, in any case, so 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 let's just take it a little farther back here. Tell us a little bit about your your upbringing and, and growing up in Japan and Kyoto. Um, it was fine. I I had some difficulties as a you know mixed kid, but mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. it was, mm -hmm fun overall <laughs> you want you want could you share a little bit more about that experience 
Um, well, I don't want to be like really <laughs> sound sad, <laughs> but you know, yeah. like, yeah, like, well, people will like point out the difference, like the mean kid will like, you know, like play around and like make fun of the, mm-hmm. you know, the dark skin jokes, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's, I kind of like change that to like more positive energy to like make music. So it's fine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, how, how, in, in what way does that influence the lyrics that you write today? Um, such as, uh, the, there's a song called like Blueber- Blueberry, like that is like inspired from some like real incident happen. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. Mm, 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 mm. gotcha, gotcha. Um, and so, just moving on a little bit, you know, with this track "Kill Me" that you released, you know, mm. what what was your reaction the first time? You know, I know from the Frank Renaissance side, we we reached out to you guys about you know doing this track with Mick, um, but but what was your reaction when you when you first, um, you know, when we first reached out? I was like, no way, <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't believe it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but yeah, it was very. I was very happy. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And and now, now that now that the track is out, it's in the wild. You know, it was the number one number one track on on two of the top hip hop players mm-hmm. for Japan at launch. You know, how does it feel to have sort of your first song out? You know, really for um, a global audience with with me. Mm-hmm. I feel very honored actually to work with Mick and yeah. Um, yeah, I, I was like really big fan of Mick Jenkins. So mm. great, great. What, what what are your what are some of your favorite things about? What are some of your favorite tracks by Mick Jenkins? Uh, you know, what uh, are your favorite some of your favorite things about about his his style? I love his song. Uh, the call uh, jazz. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I love his relics, his voice, his delivery style, and he's the music video was good as well. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and so I know I know the plan is you know hopefully going forward to be start putting out more tracks for for global audiences. Um, you know what, you know what makes you most excited about you know you've you've produced or you've you've put out albums that have been successes here in Japan, but starting to really put out tracks for you know the whole world, whole world to mm, see. Mm, mm, you know mm. what what are you what are you most excited about that? Um, to be honest, maybe, uh, um, how can I say, I feel excited, but not because it's like going to, it's going to like overseas. Um, I feel like very excited happy and excited because my friends are like really getting hyped about me being <laughs> like you know like doing songs with like Mick Jenkins and yeah that kind of like encouraged me to like go further mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah that's 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 really great that's really great to hear um you know what what are some of the most you know Mick Jenkins of course we did this first track here you know what are some of the artists that you're most sort of inspired by overseas you know that that you listen to on a on a regular basis. I listen to a lot of, a lots of Frank Ocean, D'Angelo, Kendrick Lamar, Nas. Mm-hmm. And so so yeah, yeah. Dream dream collaboration for Daichi Yamamoto. <laughs> who, who who is it? Who is it in your mind? Frank what Ocean. should we be looking for? Frank Ocean. <laughs> okay okay. Why why Frank Ocean? Uh, I I love everything about him. Like his music is amazing. His mm-hmm. poet, mm-hmm. the relics. Uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, for sure. And and you know, I think Frank Ocean. You know, he's definitely um, you know brings all different types of perspective and emotion to his his lyricism. You know, what do you think? Um, you know, when you when you sort of put your tracks together today you know what are what are you channeling you know what what are, is it is it inner frank frank ocean that's coming from, <laughs> from daichi or what 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 are you what are you channeling when you when you create your tracks 
Um, but I I try to like focus on my surroundings and like kind of like channel um, to Nandero. Not like being like you know like bragging and boasting, but like more like being honest. Daichi Yamamoto stuff. Mm -hmm. mm. uh, for sure. So, so you know, for the audience that is maybe just learning about you today, who who is honest Daichi Yamamoto? <laughs> <laughs> I know it's a big question. I know it's a big question. But big question. The world, the world wants to know. The world wants to know. Well, yeah, this is this is me. <laughs> 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 yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, and so, you know, I would love for you know the audience today to learn, you know, a little bit about more about who who that you is, right? And so, you know, we've talked about, you know, we talked about some of your influences, some of the things that you like, you know, what, you know, of course we know Daichi Yamamoto, the rapper, you know, what, you know, I know you're a big art artist as well. You went to art school as well, you know. What, what, as an art, more broadly as an artist, um, you know, who are some of your influences? Um, John, John Michel Basquiat was the, like, first artist that, like, leads me to the path of, like, drawing and painting stuff. Like, he was, like, the first big inspiration, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What do you, I mean, Basquiat, of course, you know, got really famous in Japan because, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Maiza Hassan bought a bunch of his, his pieces, of course. Yeah. <laughs> um, but of course, it's also a very famous artist globally. You know, what, what about Basquiat's art and work really inspires you? Um, hmm. Give me a second. <laughs> <laughs> no worries, no worries. <laughs> Um, I'll go to Japanese as well. Uh, um, I'm not Well, like, um, it was more like I didn't know there was a, actually a black person in, you know, like art scene until I saw Basquiat. Mm -hmm. So like before I like I would like try to imitate like Picasso painting or someone's painting when I was younger. And I saw Basquiat and I, oh cool, like it's like black dude in art scene as well. So like maybe I could do it like as well. No, uh, for sure. Uh, for so. sure. Yeah, I mean I think that's such a that's such an important point you think about art and representation, you know, especially in Japan, right? You don't see mm. a lot of, you know, mixed mixed race people. I mean, you see, you start to see more and more mixed race people in popular media today, and especially, you know, with you know the emergence of you know Osaka Naomi, of course, and Hachimura, um, you know, becoming such big figures today. You know, mm. when you think about Japan, how important do you think representation is? You know, seeing seeing prominent Half black, half Japanese <laughs> people in media. You know how how important do you think that is? Uh, pers hmm. When I was um, it might be a different topic. Off might be an off topic. But when I was younger, like I, it was hard for me to kind of relate some people in TVs because, like, kids will like point out, oh, like you are different from us so like you cannot have like same like common you know like artist follow that kind of mindset so like i wish when i was younger there was like hachimura louis or like osaka naomi like who could like speak out like what i was feeling kind of or and i could relate to mm, so i think it's important for them to kind of like what they were doing is mm. mm -hmm. And how how do you feel like you can be be a part of that too? Mm. Just, I just gotta make good music and you know. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, thanks. Like, positive message. Yeah, 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, no, of course. And what what do you think sort of, you know, what do you think sort of the impact that your music that can have? What do you think it can have on on Japan and and the world? Hmm. I never thought that far, but like I I always aim to write my songs to my kind of like my friends or some someone who were close to me. Like it was, it's like more like an open letter to them, kind of to like、mm-hmm. help my friends out. Yeah, yeah.、Mm-hmm. got it, got it. Do you want Do you want to talk about one of those open letters from, from your some of your tracks?、Um, doesn't have to be "Kill Me" necessarily. <laughs> uh, one of the song, my my favorite song tune is、uh, called "Shang Shanghai Band." That was like one of my best friend. He had some difficult times when he was working, so I wrote that song for him. Got it, got it.、Mm-hmm. And so with this track, with this track, "Kill Me." So、hmm. you know, I think if we think about "Kill Me" as an open letter, could you could you tell us a little <laughs> bit about? Could you tell us a little bit about?、Uh, you know, it's if if、uh, looking at the lyrics, especially in Japanese, you know,、mm-hmm. there's definitely a story there. You know, you don't have to get into depth necessarily. But do you want to, Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Um. Well, I I could say it was a real incident <laughs> happened <laughs> during during the pandemic stuff.、Mm-hmm. So yeah,、mm-hmm. <laughs> I can't yeah, yeah. I can't get it get into deep. Yeah. Conversation, too, too but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so、uh, you know, the pandemic, of course, it's it's definitely changed. You know what it's like to be a musician and. And an artist, you know, you you put out an EP during the pandemic, but could you tell us a little bit about the experience,、um, you know, and how things have changed as a musical artist, you know, coming out of the pandemic?、Mm. Um, it was tough, but I could like focus、uh, making songs. There was there was more time than before, but also like there were actually like too many time in my hand. So like I had to like figure out how to kind of organize my schedule and like keep everything on track. That was the tough side, I think. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, it's definitely definitely a strange time for for everybody.、Mm. Um, mm. And you know, today of course we're doing this con- uh, this uh, uh, chat here in in a virtual environment in in crypto voxels. You know, what what do you think? You know the the These virtual environments. What do you think they? You know, what sort of impact do you think they can have on on music and, and performance in the future? Well, like today, like I had to like not not today, like this year I had to like cancel a few gigs, but like in this virtual like real. But, uh, uh, sorry, <laughs> in the script of Excel. So, so、um, not at all. Just not too sad. I have to、oh, think. Uh. So we can we can、uh, let's get back to this one. Just a thought, you know. You recently also, you know, you've been somebody who's been probably more engaged than most people in Japanese hip hop within、mm-hmm. sort of virtual environments and gaming. You know, you just had your track,、um, you know, your track come out、um, as or one of the tracks that you had was、uh, featured in a promotional video for for Valorant、uh, mm-hmm. for the game as well. You know, what are your thoughts on sort of the Uh, I guess、uh, relationship that your tracks can have with games and gaming. Do you think? Do you think they sort of fit well?、Uh, how, how do you, How do you think about that?、Um, I never I never thought it would fit actually that well.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was happy with the outcome.、Mm-hmm. Yeah.、Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And so you know, just want to ask you a couple last questions. Of course, you know, with this with this campaign、um, and this track release, you know, we have a, an NFT. Release with it as well,、mm. and you know it's it's definitely you know just starting in terms of all the the hype and excitement around NFTs. You know, what do what are your thoughts around the impact that NFTs can have on the future of music, and also you know especially in Japan? Mm, mm, mm.、Uh, yeah, 
本日本語でもいいですか<笑>日本語でも大丈夫です。I'll, I'll translate, I'll translate your answer for the audience here. So no worries. なんか、今多分サブスクリプションがすごいこう広がってて、その次に何が来るんだろうみたいなのをみんな多分いろいろ考えている中で、なんかこの NFT っていうのが一個、なんかちょっと、なんていうんですかね。あーなんか一つ可能性として出てきてて、まだ日本だとそんなに多分や、なんだろう、注,注目はされてると思うんですけど、アーティストってこう何かやってるっていう人は少ないのかなと思うんですけど、なんかアニメ文化とか、そういう漫画とかね、なんかすごいうまいことコネクトしそうな分野だなとは思ってます。<laughs> so, just to quickly translate for everybody what, what I just said here, you know, we went from, from CDs, of course, several years ago to sort of streaming music and subscription services. And I think, you know, the question was sort of what, what comes next after this? And, you know, NFTs, you know, it's still very early days, but feel like it's the new frontier. And, you know, so there's a possibility that, you know, it really does, does eventually expand, though. There aren't too many artists in Japan who have started to. Get into it yet. Of course, there's a ton that have that started to get deep in this world on the US side. But, um, you know, when you think about Japan, you know, there's such a strong anime and, and manga culture, and potentially there's、um, some synergies between music and, and sort of anime and manga culture that can help sort of continue to,、um, you know, proliferate this, this culture. And so,、uh, you know, thank you for your, thank you for your perspective there.、Um, so, I want to say one last question and then. I want to open it up actually to the audience. If you press enter,、uh, you can send through any questions that you might have, and we'll try to pick them up here.、Um, but、uh, so, what, are, what is one thing, Daichi, if you could tell everybody here today, one thing、hmm. that they don't know and should know about Daichi Yamamoto, what would that be? <laughs>、um. <laughs> I bought a red LED light for my skin to, <laughs> <laughs> to make it brighter. <laughs> 20 minutes a day. 20 minutes. Oh, interesting. Fun, fun fact about Daichi Daichi is very serious about his skincare. Just so everybody, everybody knows.、Um, so that is a fun fact. Let me just see here if we're any, getting any thoughts or questions. Okay. so... Ah, so this is a good question. You know, what was the biggest challenge for this virtual event?、Um, I guess that's, a, that's maybe a question for me, maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> More than the, the team here. But,、uh, but yeah, I mean, I think with putting together this virtual event, I mean, I think the biggest thing was, you know, just doing it for the first time. You know, I think big shout out to the team at, at Dow Records for being able to help us put this together. You know, you know whether it be creating, you know, thinking about how, you know, what sort of NFTs. We were going to produce,、um, you know, how we were going to produce this event itself. You know, we were really very new to this. And so, you know, got a lot of help. But,、um, but, you know, I think, you know, now that we've done it once, I think I'm really excited to do more for within these virtual environments and see, you know, how we can really, you know, create new experiences that you can't do in the physical world, in the digital world. And so, really digging deep into that and, you know, how we can do more with, with artists and fans, you know, we're really excited about. Um, and so, I guess the hardest thing was probably doing it for the first time, probably more than anything.、Um, and so, you know, now that we've been able to get this sort of、uh, experience down, you know, we can do more things like this in the future.、Um, and I'll see, uh, uh, let's see, I'm looking for,、uh, oh, I got a question. Good question, actually.、Um, what was your favorite part about working with Frank Renaissance for this project? <laughs> Um, well, actually, the Len, Len San really inspired me because he will say like lots of like great ideas, but like in my mind, I was like, oh, can, can it happen? Like, can it happen? Can it happen?、Uh, but like, he would just like smash it, everything like boom, 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 boom. And I was like, wow, like, if you really like believe in it, like. It could happen. And that was like really good like, experience to me, for me.、Yeah. Mm. Much love, much love, Daichi. <laughs> We couldn't have done it without you. And big shout out to Masato san, too, your manager.
um, for really uh, uh, helping us put it to helping us put this together. And I think you know, yeah, you know, I you know I believe in you and us. And oh, it looks like we're getting a lot of questions here. Um, what is your song process like? Uh, songwriting process like? Do you do you think of a melody first, lyrics first, or do you start with composing a beat first? So good question there from the audience. Uh, depends. Uh, depends on the song. Like if I want to go like heavy, like really cool stuff, I will write the li lyrics first. But if I want to, you know, like make fun melodic song, I will like start with melodies. Sometimes I will like make beats and lyrics at the same time, and like step by step, I will like construct the songs. Got you. Got you. All right, I'm looking looking for these questions here. I thought, think I just uh, missed one, but uh, I think I actually, if I remember it correctly, um, you know, what does what making what does making tracks mean to you? You know, what what is it? Um, how does it help you as a person? You know, become a better person. Um, yeah, and be a better Daichi. <laughs> um, I think it's more like a therapy me maybe like questioning myself and like writing what i really feel or you know that kind of process really helped me to understand like who i am maybe mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm. got it got it no that's that's exciting to hear um i'm just let's see if we get any more questions here oh let's one last question i'm seeing here and then more, we'll have the music video is, is premiering in just a few minutes. So, you know, uh, oh, we're getting a ton of questions now. What's one thing you think you can improve on as an artist? Proof. Um, in, 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 pr improve on as an artist. Improve. Yeah. Ah, I want to be confident. <laughs> Speaking in <Ta> public. <laughs> <laughs> so th this is all, this is all new? Yeah. <laughs> well, you're, you've been great so far, so, so no worries. Um, I'm going to actually, there's a funny question that somebody's asking, what kind of tacos can you make? <laughs> that's actually, <laughs> there you go. That's a good question. Can you make that's any tacos? Uh, it's, no. It's, it's a friend? No? no tacos? Sure. No tacos? No tacos. All right. Uh, and I got one question here. What favorite Japanese artist, singer, or rapper? Uh, rapper, uh, Slack, Kojo, JJJ, Shingutsu will be my favorite MCs in Japan. Singer or other. Oh, um, Yamashita Tatsuro as well. Mm -hmm. mm. I think this is my favorite singers. Got it, got it. Okay, well, perfect. Um, you know, one one last uh, one last message for the audience, and I'll I'll, I'll give sort of a, a a quick last message to everybody as well. Um, oh, oh yeah, yeah, okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> no worries, no worries. Well, yeah, thanks for having me, and hope you enjoy the <laughs> with. English. <laughs> no, no, your English is fantastic. No worries, Daichi. Um, but yeah, thank you everybody for joining. Really sorry. It looks like uh, we weren't able to have uh, um, Mick make it today, but hopefully we can we can get him in a in another conversation. Hopefully in the in the near future. But uh, thank you everybody so much. Um, just to give you a little um, heads up about what's coming next. Of course, we had uh, our our three D jacket. NFT drop, the Kill Me in the Metaverse Genesis NFT drop. You can see those NFT jackets along the wall here. Um, you know, those, uh, if you purchase an NFT, um, you're able to also get the physical version uh, designed by Japanese designer Shoko Nishi. Um, and big thank you also as well to Mar Margixa for, for designing the uh, virtual version as well. Um, we also are having the short storm uh, video, music video NFT release coming in about 13 minutes on the big screen right above you guys. And so be on the lookout for that. Also dropping in open C momentarily. And so, you know, really appreciate you guys coming. Thank you so much for the love um, and catch you guys uh, on the other side in the metaverse. Peace out.
Thank you.